Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has visited troops inside the Gaza Strip. AP correspondent Mimi Montgomery reports. During a temporary ceasefire, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pays a visit to the Gaza Strip, meeting commanders and speaking to troops. We are here in the Strip with our heroic fighters. We're making every effort to return our hostages, and at the end of the day, we will return everyone. Netanyahu spoke as Hamas militants freed 17 more hostages, including 14 Israelis and the first American in a third set of releases under the truce. His visit comes as the health ministry in Gaza says more than 13,300 Palestinians have died in the war, roughly two-thirds of them women and children. More than 1,200 Israelis, mostly civilians, died in the initial Hamas attack. I'm Mimi Montgomery. A four-year-old American girl is safely in Israel after being released Sunday from captivity in Gaza, U.S. President Joe Biden said as he urged the pause in Israel-Hamas fighting to be extended to allow for more hostages released. Biden said Abigail has, quote, been through terrible trauma. Her parents were murdered by U.S.-designated terrorist group Hamas militants when members of the Islamist group attacked Israel on October 7th. Sierra Leone President Julius Mata Bayo said most of the leaders of an attack on a military barracks in the capital Freetown earlier on Sunday had been arrested. Security operations and investigations are ongoing. We will ensure that those responsible are held accountable through due process. Earlier, the government said security forces had repelled quote-unquote renegade soldiers who attempted to break into a military armory in Freetown during the early hours of Sunday. A nationwide curfew was imposed. This is VOA News. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Sunday thanked Ukraine's military for fighting Russian attacks and its rescue services for tackling the consequences of extreme winter weather that he said deprived about 400 settlements in 10 regions of power. In his nightly video address, Zelensky said relentless intense battles were ongoing in the eastern regions of Donetsk and Kharkiv, while extremely challenging weather was affecting areas from Kiev region in the north to Odessa in the south. Ukraine's border service said Moldova had temporarily suspended vehicle access to its territory from two crossing points in Odessa region. Some rural Malawi public schools are being equipped with high-definition smart TVs, tablets, and free Internet connectivity to promote digital learning among students, but some school officials say more tablets are needed. Lamek Messina reports from central Malawi. Malawi government authorities say they are trying to get more tablets. Chomora Mikika is the director of science, technology and innovation in Malawi's Ministry of Education. Speaking, there's a procurement process taking place to buy devices to run MyRub in selected schools, and this will be glowing. In the meantime, Mikika says the government has signed a letter of intent with the International Telecommunications Union, UNICEF, and the GIGA Initiative to provide digital resources to over 8,000 public schools in Malawi by 2013. Lamek Masina for VOA News, Deza District, Malawi. One of the world's largest icebergs is drifting beyond Antarctic waters. AP correspondent Tiffany Wong reports. The British Antarctic Survey says an iceberg about three times the size of New York City is drifting beyond Antarctic waters after being grounded for more than three decades. The iceberg being one of the world's largest split from the Antarctic's Flicker ice shelf in 1986, but it became stuck to the ocean floor. Now it has shrunken in size and has been moving quickly. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres visited Antarctica last week and said the world needs to address climate change. I'm Tiffany Wong. Pope Francis says he has a lung inflammation but will go later this week to Dubai for a climate change conference. Francis skipped his weekly Sunday appearance at a window overlooking St. Peter's Square. It came a day after the Vatican said he was suffering from a mild flu. Francis said he was going to Dubai later this week to deliver a speech at the COP28 climate conference.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.